are you working on right now? We're working on a fashion magazine. Um, it's called uh, Very L, and uh, it's going to be published in Paris. It's all in French. How's your uh, French? My French is terrible. How's your Belgian? <laughs> Even worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, actually, yeah, uh, we we end up translating a lot of the stuff using that uh, Mac translation tool that you get in the widgets. You know, Does that work? Thing. Really? Yeah, it works. Yeah, yeah, it's not too bad. But uh, have you done quite a bit of magazine work? Um, you know, I, when I first became aware of your work through Sarah, which I guess would have been, I guess three or four years ago now, or or, or thereabouts. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know about Wire and when I first became aware of it. I think everybody who worked with me had all seen Wire. Um, was Wire the first magazine that you'd done? Yeah, we hadn't done a magazine before. We just um, we we were just we were just doing music packaging work, uh, and uh, then we were because of the music packaging work we were doing, we were approached by the Wire magazine who'd seen our work, and they they said, you know, it doesn't matter that you haven't don't have a magazine design background. We just love your work. We want you to do it. So we uh, have we you done a magazine since Wire? Yeah, we've been designing. We still are. We're, we're working on uh, a magazine called Varoom, which is the Journal of Illustration and Made Images. Um, that's been going for, I think we've, we've just finished the seventh issue. It comes out three times a year, rather bizarrely. It doesn't follow any seasonal pattern. I've, I've never actually done magazine work for a whole lot. What's, like, what's the time frame of getting that stuff done, like what, from beginning to end? Well, it kind of... Uh, does well, it not end? Well, when we did the wire, it was constant because we'd we'd start one magazine about a week after the the one before just you know it come in landed on the desk. So there's like three weeks of the month you're working on it, on and off. But this for room because it's only three times a year it means we get a bit of a break between issues. <laughs> Am I going out of range? You're just going out of range of talent, John. <laughs> Talk a little bit more about the wire, really, because I'm a fan of that. And like one question that I always have for myself and for every designer is like when to end a project, because so much of what you do is project based, and you end up working for clients for years, and and you find yourself, at least I found myself in the past, just getting into ruts and and not really knowing if I should end the client relationship. What made you decide to stop working for the wire? Because the work is quite heroic, and and I don't think anything for that particular heroic. Well, no, I, I dig it. I'm not just stroking you. I really like it. Um, like, <laughs> okay. th there, it's really heroic material, and and the work prior and and after, I don't think, has actually been up to the same par. Oh so, wow! Uh, okay. What what decision? How did you come to the decision that you just want to stop stop doing it? Um, well, when we when we took the thing on, we decided that that we wouldn't do it for any longer than the guy who was working on it before. He he was working on it for five years, and we were just laughing at. He said the beachhead. He 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 made the marker in the beach about how far he could go. Yeah, it's like we, we were just we were just thinking five years. Can you imagine working on this magazine for five years? That's just crazy. And of course, four and a half years later, we realized this is just stupid. We've got to get out of here, otherwise we're we're exactly we've become the thing we most feared. So um, yeah, I mean we we'd done we we felt like we'd done what we wanted to do, which was not just redesign it but reinvent it and reinvigorate it and give it a give it a, an identity and a kind of you know just a, a a real kind of push uh and and you know sales were up and it was looking good and the last thing we wanted to do was was just drag yeah, along <laughs> yeah it's just you've got to get out when it's when it's good and it's that you know that takes that takes a bit of you know it was it was money we were earning a little bit of money from it but um we decided nope that was it we were going to turn our back on it and and do something else and we do that periodically every now and again we think if we're doing something if it, if it's a kind of uh, a visual approach we might be working on something and it's going really really well and it looks good and we're getting clients phoning up saying can you do something like this project we've seen of yours and after a couple of projects we think okay that's it we're not doing any more of this because we don't want to get stuck in a rut we don't want to be known for doing one particular thing and that's something that that we find really easy to do is just to say no, nope, not doing that anymore. I mean, it's not easy to say no to the money because sometimes yeah. the clients say, "I mean, we have done projects, we have done things where we know we're only doing this for the money." Um, no, get out of here! No way. 
This never happened. I know. I don't believe it. Well, we don't. We, we, we're pretty hardcore when it comes to... <laughs> Sarah will vouch for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, How else can you buy gin, really? Where well, yeah. yeah. So The British Empire was founded on gin. It'd be hard for you to turn down money. And your fealty to the Queen would require uh, yes. you keep enough money in the bank just for gin. I couldn't possibly comment. 